Primetime Sports with Scott Alexander is underwritten by Task Performance. Crescent City Steakhouse, a true neighborhood restaurant operated by the Vojkovic family since 1934, is the oldest steakhouse in the city of New Orleans. Serving only hand-cut, prime-age, corn-fed beef for over 80 years, Crescent City Steakhouse has become a dining destination for both die-hard locals and adventurous travelers who seek traditional, timeless New Orleans cuisine. Crescent City Steakhouse, 1001 North Broad, on the corner of St. Philip, in the heart of New Orleans. Fall in love with autumn with PJ's new seasonal lattes. Our pumpkin latte brings you all the flavors of a pumpkin pie with hints of cinnamon and nutmeg, like your favorite holiday dessert in a cup. And our s'mores latte with flavors of toasted marshmallows, warm milk chocolate, and graham cracker cinnamon is sure to bring back campfire memories. The PJ's Fall Seasonal Lattes, available at your local PJ's only for a limited time. So here's the bottom line. Good evening, and welcome to a very special midsummer edition of Primetime Sports. Hey, I've got my seersucker on. I'm ready to roll. My name's Scott Alexander, and we got a great one for you today. First of all, i got to remind you next week, we have Coach Ogeron from LSU. He's coming down with the governor who came last year with Carl Malone. This year, Governor John Bell Edwards is coming back with Coach Ogeron. should be a fun show, but this one's going to be fabulous as well. Before we get into all that, so much going on this week in all of sports, not just in Louisiana, but around the world. But we know what makes our butter bread best right here in New Orleans, and that's the New Orleans Saints. Training camp, well, the, the schedule is finally out. It starts in two weeks on July 25th. It goes all the way to August 19th. And there are 10 days that you, the public, everybody in New Orleans and Louisiana and the Gulf Coast who support the Saints can come watch the training camp practices. And that begins July 28th, and that'll go on to August. So from July 28th to August 2nd, they can come every single day. By the way, recap of the Pels. It was a flurry last week. Remember when all the action happened. We'll give you a quick recap of what we have so far in free agency. Well, the easy one is the Pels lost Boogie Cousins to the Warriors. You know, this might be a little bit of a, a subtraction, addition by subtraction in this case, because he's not going to be able to play till the All-Star break. They needed some help in the beginning. They lost Boogie. They also lost Rondo, which to me, Rajon Rondo is a bigger loss in the fact that he was a seasoned veteran, played so well in the playoffs. You see him fighting right there with Isaiah Thomas in the Lakers. That's where he's headed to L.A. Uh, next, well, they gained a guy from Los Angeles. His name's Julius Randle. He led the Lakers last year in points and rebounds. He's only 23 years old. He's going to fit perfectly in this system with Alvin Gentry and, of course, Anthony Davis, who recruited him hard. Both those guys are Kentucky graduates. Hey, by the way, also, Alfred Payton. A lot of you were poo-pooing this, this deal Then when they brought him over. He's a New Orleans native, went to Eric, and then ULL. Top 10 pick with the Magic, and then he went over to, to Phoenix for the last half of last season. He is going to be... Probably the starter. They're going to look around. They also re-signed Ian Clark, who last year was a great backup. So I don't feel too bad about the point guard position. I know you'd rather Rondo for playoff time, but Rondo didn't really care during the regular season. These guys will be able to grow all season long, and the key is they are also young. Hey, how about this? The Summer League team, they started off with a bang. They had three games already, but those first two with Coach Kevin Hansen, man, they were on fire. They blew out two opponents. They had the Raptors. And then they absolutely destroyed the heat in those games. Uh, everyone wanted to see Frank Jackson. Remember him? The guy who would have been a first-rounder, but for his injury, he had a hurt foot last season. Well, you know, he had a great start in this game. He missed all of last season. We know that. But he had this first game he played in Summer League. In only 12 minutes, the guy had 13 points, six rebounds. He hit 57% from the field. And all of, a sudden, all of a sudden, everybody's like, okay, this guy's a contributor for sure. Well, then we had a scary moment. Because you remember last year? When he had that foot injury, he went down, grabbing his foot on this play right here, trying to squeeze between two defenders, and he was holding it. It turns out to just be a sprained ankle. 
Uh, so that is a little bit of a relief. Thank goodness he's only going to be out for a few weeks. Hey, Sheck Diallo, he has looked absolutely fantastic in his third summer league. You know, he was only, uh, after his freshman year, came to the Pels from Kansas. But this guy is going to be very good. He had 25 points yesterday. He's averaged 18 and about nine rebounds throughout the three games. Hey, rookie Tony Carr, the only draft pick the Pelicans had. Remember, because they got Nico Meritich in the trade last year. They had to give up a number one. Well, this is a late second rounder, Tony Carr. We want to see him. He's doing okay, not playing great, but not playing badly either. Uh, how about undrafted free agent Trayvon Blewett? I cannot believe this guy did not get drafted. I uh, worked a few Xavier games for Fox last year. He's a superstar. He certainly was one of the best players in that league over there with Villanova and all those teams. He had 24 points in the first game in summer league, 26 in the second. And get this, the guy was shooting 12 of 18 that's 67 percent from three he had a pretty good game in game three although they did get beat pretty badly by detroit in that one hey going on to baseball former lsu superstars aaron nola and alex bregman those guys were fantastic in tiger uniforms we'll get this they were both just selected to their first major league baseball all-star games hey both these guys were rejected for stardom from the very beginning one was the second pick in the entire draft right there. That's Alex Bregman. Nola was the seventh pick overall in the draft. And these guys are making their all-star game appearances in only their second and third full season. And this makes four straight years that LSU has had an all-star game in, the, in baseball. That is not normal. They have a lot of pro bowlers in football but, and a lot of great baseball players, but not all-star level that much. You remember DJ LeMahieu, who won the batting title in 2016? Well, he went to the all-star game in 2015 and 17, and then right in between there, Will Harris, the great reliever for uh, the Houston Astros, he went in 2016. So the streak continues with these two young players getting in. Hey, by the way, Will Harris, you see there, he had a 1.90 ERA in 15 and 225 in 16. And then he won a World Series ring last year with the Astros. World Cup. Now we're getting on to the world news. This is the biggest event in the entire world. I know the Super Bowl is huge here, but as far as the rest of the world, this is what it gets down to. As of right now, when you're watching the show, there's only three teams left. But as of taping today, there's still four teams. As Belgium and France, they squared off today earlier. And I wish I knew who won, but I don't. But you probably do, so I can't talk about that one. But what I can talk about is tomorrow, the semifinal, which should be a dandy between Croatia and England. Hey, this match, they feature two superstars you see right there. Croatian Luka Modric, phenomenal. I watched him against Russia. He was fantastic. And Englishman Harry Kane who's been a superstar the entire way through. The Croatian team, they won a thriller, like I said, against Russia. The, the final score after regulation was 2-2. And then they had 30 minutes of free time. That's overtime for us here in America. But it, it was still 2-2, so then they go to penalty kicks. That's called a shootout, and Croatia won it 4-3. It was fantastic. England beat Sweden on Saturday, so they face off tomorrow early afternoon. Wimbledon, I love tennis. And they are also down to the quarters. It was quarters in the World Cup this weekend, now the semis. But Wimbledon and tennis is down to the final eight. And how about this on the women's side? There's no top ten players left that are seeded top ten, I should say that, because we all know Serena Williams normally would be fantastic. But how about 11th seeded Angelique Kerber? She's from Germany. She's the top seed left at 11. And Serena who is the 25th seed because she just had a baby last year. She played in the French Open, which you see right there. And so people did think she'd do well. But this is Serena Williams we're talking about. Serena Williams, you remember her? Seven Wimbledon titles. She's got the most Grand Slam uh, wins than any player in history, male or female, 23. You never count her out. And as of her win this afternoon, or this morning, I should say, this is the favorite, in my opinion. She is down to the four. Uh, she's the first one that got to the, the semifinals. Hey, how about Roger Federer, though? He also has won 20 majors. He's won six Wimbledons. So between the two, 13 Wimbledons and 43 Grand Slam events. They're obviously the most male and female. Roger and Rafael Nadal, who have been fantastic rivals for the last several years, they look to be on yet another crash court course for yet another final in a Grand Slam event. Let's hope so. Every time these two square off, it is a lot of fun. And now we come to the story of ex-Saint Brandon Browner. How about Brandon Browner? You remember him. Yeah, he was the cornerback, the malcontent who poisoned the Saints locker room a couple of years back. Uh, I remember meeting him at, at, at training camp in West Virginia. Very scary dude. 
And now we kind of know why. He, you know, we got him because he had Super Bowl rings with the Seahawks and the Patriots. He's a tough player. I can't take that away. But he basically stole $18 million from the Saints. Very poor. He's on one of the worst defenses in NFL history, and he was a big part of that. Well, now he's unfortunately sitting in a California jail. He's got a $10 million bond, charges of burglary, kidnapping, false imprisonment, and also a violation of protective order. Uh, stuff dealing with his girlfriend, went in there and stole the watch that he had given her, et cetera, et cetera. So we wish him the best. Hey, and also, if you want something more fun to end this first open with, how about Alfred Payton, a New Orleans native, a new New Orleans Pelican now. I told you about him a little earlier. Well, he's having his second annual charity Glow Kickball Tournament. Check it out. It's uh, this weekend, 4 to 8, I believe it is. It's J.D. Spencer Park in Gretna. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. He's a West Banker. He went to air it, like I said earlier. I love kickball growing up. And uh, you know what? I'm in my 50s now. I still think I'd love to play some kickball. Hey, by the way, it's ladies night tonight. I cannot wait for the show. We've had several women and ladies and even a little girl. Remember the little basketball player that was on the show? Uh, we had Dee Dee Bro, who obviously is the great gymnastics coach, and several more. But we've never had two on one show. So this is unique, and we're in into our 135th show. I can't wait for this one because we have Molly... Kimball, who obviously, she's a registered dietitian over there with Oshner Systems. She's with Eat Fit Nola. She is the founder of that. I am very much looking forward to this segment. And also, we have Jen Hale. Everybody that's a Pels fan knows exactly who she is. She's been manning the sidelines now for several years with Joel Myers and David Wesley calling the games for television. And she's also Fox Sports NFL sideline reporter. I got to work with her uh, a game this year up in Green Bay, and she's fantastic. So we'll talk about her career and also what she thinks about the Pelicans moves. And last but not least, how about this? We had the super lightweight champion of the world. He's a New Orleans native. His name is Regis Pro Gray. He's getting a lot of pub right now. You've seen him in a lot of places. But he is going to have his big fight this weekend to see if he can get all the crowns. Because WBC is just one of them. But I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a lot of fun today. You're watching Primetime Sports. Stay tuned. She had to go simply because And I'll let her go like she never was She had to go because she didn't know who Scott Alexander was <laughs> Hey, welcome to Primetime Sports. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that open. We have a great show for you. Hey, later in the show, we're going to teach you how to eat right when you go to restaurants. It's not just sports. We're 80% sports. We have musicians, and we have other things. And I can't wait for this segment because I have Molly Kimball. She is with Oshner Fitness, and she's also the founder of Eat Fit NOLA. Also next coming up, we have a champion of the world. There's only a few of these. WBC super lightweight champ Regis Progray is going to fight in his hometown of New Orleans. He could have gone to Vegas. But he decided to stay right here, and he's going to fight at the UNO Lakefront Arena to get that title and continue on. But right now, this is a face you all know very well. If you're a Pelicans fan, you absolutely know her in the league because you watch the games on TV if you're not at them. And she is the sideline reporter for them as well as the NFL uh, sideline reporter for Fox Sports. She's been doing that for several years and does some college football as well. She's an LSU grad. And she is a New Orleanian as well. Her name is Jennifer Hale. We'll call her Jen. <laughs> Welcome to the show, my friend. Oh, thank you for having me. Such a pleasure. Have you been? Been good. Been good. Enjoying a little bit of downtime. Uh, watching from afar as all of these changes in the NBA unfold. Can you believe how different the league's going to look next it's season? Crazy, it's crazy, isn't it? It's nuts. Before we get to that, I, w I want to talk about downtime because your fall and winter schedule is <laughs> unbelievable because you mix up the NFL, you're on the sideline every Sunday afternoon, and you do 82 games, if you can do 82, which you, obviously you can't because there's conflicts, but talk about that schedule, which you do for about six months of the year. It's a lot all at once. Thankfully, I love it, and I love to travel, so it yeah. doesn't bother me one bit. Right. Uh, but yeah, October, November, December, and the beginning of January are kind of crazy when basketball and football cross. I do NBA during the week, and then hop on a plane and go catch my NFL crew wherever they are. And as you mentioned, uh, last season and in this season as well, I'll add some college in there on Friday nights. So it's, it's busy. Yeah, we have some college shots of you. I kind of forgot. Well, this is a <laughs> shot we'd had. This was our game yes. at Green Bay. We kind of broke in. Well, y'all broke in. Greg Jennings. We did. His first game ever as an announcer. He was a former Green Bay Packer. 
But there he is. Greg's on the right. This was in the meeting, obviously, with uh, head coach Mike McCarthy. But when you go on the road, I have a question because I used to travel with the Hawks, too. And there's our boy Tanner Lee. How about that? <laughs> that He's was a, three a fun time, game, yeah. Three-time guest of the show. Yeah, we did a couple of Nebraska games, too. But the, when you travel with, say, the NBA team, every, every franchise is different. Sometimes we would travel commercial, but there was like a five-year stretch. We traveled with the team on those deluxe planes where they, each seat is carved out to where you, they, a seven-footer can sit in them. Um, do you travel on the team plane with the, with the team? Whenever I can. Right. I, trust me, you go back to commercial, right. and then it's like, right. whoa, wait a minute, I got hold spoiled. On. <laughs> hold on, hold on. And then, and then if you have a game in Canada, back then they had Vancouver and Toronto when I was doing it. So Customs was like just a table right outside the plane, and they let you through really fast instead of having to deal with it. And you know what? Thankfully for NBA teams, and I would imagine MLB as well, it, it's still very similar. The, right. the, the TSA frenzy hasn't reached that level yet. All right, LSU. I got to talk about this. You were Miss LSU. Are you? Back in the day, you're going. You're going uh, way back Not in that history, far aren't back. you? Not far back to when <laughs> I was there. But no, that's a big deal at LSU. I remember the ones that were there when I was there. Talk about your LSU experience. Oh, this is a wow. show that's all over Louisiana. A lot of LSU grads watch it. Talk about how much fun you had at school, and, and, and I know you were a great student as well. Uh, best four years of my life, yeah. really, absolutely. Everybody says that, uh, and, and you don't realize how wonderful those years are until they're past. Uh, but it was just, it was really a, a perfect setting for me, Scott, because my father had passed just six weeks before I went to LSU. And um, the community embraced me. I had been, I grew up in Alabama, born in New Orleans, but grew up in Alabama. So it was a very trying time. And, yeah. and the way the South Louisianians just love on you and make you part of the family, I, I'm forever grateful and forever attached to this city and this area because of it. And uh, yeah, LSU was phenomenal. Made some amazing friends that are, are still very dear in my life today. I cheered for LSU and then uh, yeah, got to do Miss LSU, which was quite an honor. Well, you may have your roots in Alabama, but some roots. So but many you years are years. a New Orleanian <laughs> and a Louisiana, and yes. you're all ours. We love you for it. Hey, uh, the transition from college. Did you do anything before you got into TV, or how did this work? Because I know you you've published a book. You've done a lot, and you're still very young. So talk about the transition from college to what you're doing now. Uh, I actually went to grad school. I went up to Chicago, Northwestern, Northwestern University, nice. the Bill School of Journalism, uh, which was fantastic. And I, I did politics for seven years before I started doing sports. Nice. So Where uh, were you? I did it up in D.C. for four years. It, a little bit in D.C., a yeah. little bit in Atlanta, Birmingham, Baton Rouge. Nice. I certainly um, did the grand tour. You know, in TV, you have to often move cities to move no up. Doubt. So no I, doubt, no doubt. I never unpacked half of my suitcases. Why did you get out of politics? The opportunity to work in sports came up, uh, which is something I'd always wanted to pursue. Also, unfortunately, I, I don't think there's a lot of really good political coverage anymore. So much of it right. barely scratches the surface. It's really just... And it's party-oriented too much. You yes, just, yes, and it's political spin. Right. So I was getting very frustrated with what I was doing. And I always said, if I start to get jaded, that's when it's time to do something else. That's exactly what happens. Say, hey, by the way, I know you love, before we get into what you do for NFL, what you do for the Pelicans, because we love the Pelicans, the Westminster, <laughs> the Westminster Dog Show. Yes. I saw you on the road, and you were talking about, I think you were about to do it again, or maybe you had done it, but you said this is your favorite event. So tell me about it. And, that, and by the way, that's Shannon Sharp right there? Yes. I mean, what's it like, A, to work with him, and then talk about the event? It's hysterical to work with him. He's a, he's a great guy, super yeah. personality, so country. Yeah, he's and country. And he knows more about dogs yeah. than anyone would That's have ever guessed. That's very interesting. And I don't know if you would ever guess the type of breeds he has. Well, I had a friend that was his nanny. So I, okay, I so mean, you have an inside scoop. I have an scoop. inside scoop, well, yeah. Viewers, he, he has two Pomeranians yes. and a Bull Mastiff. Yes. And it's hysterical to see him with these dogs, this great He's always guy. had those kind of dogs. Yes. This was... 20 years ago when he was still playing for the Broncos. By the way, I always knew him as a loudmouth little brother of the great Sterling Sharp. Sure. But then Shannon became a Hall of Famer <laughs> himself. I mean, this guy, and now he's doing great things over at Fox. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's we on love the show. We love having him. Yeah, he's great. So uh, the, the, the event itself, because I'm one of these that, even before the movie Best in Show came out, which I think is fabulous, uh, I've always loved the show. I think it's just funny to watch not only the dogs prance around, but the trainers run them along and see how they do it. The owners are a show yes. in themselves. Yes. Let me tell you, it's it's a fantastic event. If you love dogs, uh, if you just want to smile, you can't help but enjoy watching this event. Um, we start with an agility championship. 
uh, which actually is my favorite part of the show, and that's what you're seeing there with those pictures. And seeing these dogs compete, these canine athletes, it's really something. They, they live for that sport. They love it. And then uh, after that, the next, the next two and a half days are all Westminster. And to see all the different breeds and, and get to interact with them up close and personally, it's really special. And you know what? It might not be strenuous working out like, you know, NBA and NFL players do, but they work so hard to get these things down. I mean, it's not easy to get a dog to do those certain things. No, and a lot of people don't realize it's not a set course. It's not the same course every time. In fact, that's part of the skill and athleticism involved is the trainers don't get to see the course until just before wow, they go okay, on. I didn't know that. And the dogs have never run it. They've run courses similar in practice, but not that particular one. So t when you realize that, to see the communication between the handlers and the dogs, you realize it's a lot like a quarterback signaling to his offense or, or a linebacker calling a defense. It's really something to watch. All right, we teased it a little bit in the beginning, saying how different the NBA is going to look. Yeah. What is your impression of the first week and a half of, of free agency and, and the Pelicans in general too? Uh, free agency has, has been a surprise. Yeah. Some, things, some things not so much. You knew LeBron was going somewhere else other than sure. Cleveland. Um, and the Lakers were a I didn't see him going to Philly. I didn't see him going yeah. to New York. Right. Um, but some of the other moves, like Tony Parker, I just don't know that I'll ever get used to seeing him yeah, not in a Spurs uniform. It's like uniform. Franco Harris in a Seattle Seahawks uniform. It's, he's a stealer. Right. And there's a lot of guys we can go on with that. That is going to be weird to see Parker, though. It will. It will. As far as the Pelicans go, um, of course, I'm, I'm excited about the additions of Alfred Payton, a native son, and um, Julius Randle. Uh, I think the Pelicans have a really great big man combination they really with, do. with they Nico, really Randle, and AD. A lot of good combinations in there, too, yes. to do different things that you want to do in different situations. I think you're going to see some interesting matchup issues that they'll present. I think it was, unfortunately, the right call to pass on Boogie Cousins because of the Pelican situation with the cap space yes. and the salary Boogie wanted. You know, he would go to the Warriors for a one-year deal and less money because you're almost guaranteed a ring. Right. Uh, Pelicans, he wanted multi-year, big, big money, and yeah. you just can't invest that in a player with an Achilles injury like that that you don't know how he's going to come back. Alvin, did you hear him yesterday? I don't know if you were I did hear him yesterday. He was at Summer League, and they interviewed him about it, and he was – very upset, you could see. He wasn't like he was after a loss in a, in a, a game. You, you've seen that many times. I love the giggle. But Especially when he doesn't he agree with not, the refereeing. Yes. He, does not, he was not happy with what Boogie said about the lack of a contract offer. He basically said, that is completely false. We wanted him. We weren't going to give him a max because he had the Correct. injury. But we offered him substantial amounts of money. Remember to be two years, $40 million. And he just said, hey, I'm not, if I don't get the max, I'm not coming. And that... From everything I know from the front office, that is absolutely true. They wanted him back. They tried to get him back. Uh, but you just, it would be a stupid business decision Mortgage to go Mortgage in your future for 35 a year when you don't know is bad business. Absolutely. It could, it could put the franchise in a hole for years to come. So it was really the only thing to do. The Warriors are a fit that makes sense because they don't have to have him. He's not going to be back more than likely until at least the All-Star break next year. So the Pelicans just couldn't afford that. I do think, Scott, what's going to hurt is the loss of Rajon Rondo. I think that's going to be a big adjustment period for the Pelicans. He was such a leader no on question. the court and in the locker room. No, particularly in March, April, and in the Correct. playoffs. He wasn't always there early in the season, um, and hence they were 20 and 20. Uh, they went on that 32 and 14 roll from January 10th to after the Blazers series, and he was a big part of that. But I like Peyton in this offense. The guy. The guy can play. I'm going to say this. He doesn't have the experience and leadership, obviously, of a Rondo, if you do. But for the future, Rondo's got a year or two left. That's it. And you're getting a guy that you can grow with. And if he doesn't work out the first year, you know, you got some other guys you can pursue after that. His deal is very cheap. Uh, on, let's do this. So Anthony Davis I want to talk about because everybody talks about everybody else. But you had you came in, I believe, the same year as he did, correct? I did, yes. 2012. So you have a special relationship. Y'all both kind of grew together with this organization. Exactly. And I want you to explain what he's like to everybody out there because you've told me before, but he's a unique individual. He's extremely unique. And uh, I think one of the highlights of my career when, when it's said and done and I look back will be having to have gotten to cover him for so long and as you mentioned kind of grow and watch his career come up you know I remember 2012 when he came in as I actually Scott the first time I interviewed him I emceed the Oscar Robertson uh, breakfast at the final four right oh, wow. before Kentucky okay. won the championship right. and he of course won the Oscar Robertson trophy and let me tell you this this freshman in college you couldn't get a word out of him he was so shy yes, yes. you couldn't understand him his head was down he mumbled and to watch him go from that 
into the man he's grown into who is so benevolent in the community, so well-spoken, so conscientious around his teammates. It's, it's really awesome. I love to see good people have success. And I do think part of that is, is due to his family. Uh, it, it's interesting to watch these athletes off the court, right. and it really tells you a lot about them. And when you look at, at AD's posse, his squad, it's yeah. his family. His it's mom his family and dad. still. Still. A lot of them start that way. Joe Smith, Dwight Howard, and then a lot they of them go do. off the track. Yeah, and then they go off the track a bit, and, and it's nice to hear. You're around them, so you yes. know. Six full seasons with this guy. I mean, and listen, uh, the one thing I want to ask you, because a lot of people were like, oh, well, you didn't sign Boogie. That means he's not going to stay. I look at this as Anthony's a grown man. He knows this is a business and that Pelicans Absolutely. need it the right way. But you're around him. Do you agree with that? Uh, that he knows it's a business? That he, that he is not going to just be swayed because they didn't resign a guy like Boogie because they're both Kentucky guys. He's, oh. He can think for himself. And a lot of people here don't think that. They think that he's, oh, well, you didn't keep my two Kentucky guys. Well, they tried. No, no. Uh, Anthony Davis has consulted in a lot of decisions that are made on that Pelican squad. His opinion is important. This front office of the Pelicans franchise wants him to feel like this is his team. So certainly, uh, I don't know the extent to his decision or his input on, on what to offer Boogie, but no doubt they're, they're not going to do something that's going to completely upset AD. They, they want him here for the long haul. He's the face of the franchise, uh, and he loves New Orleans. New Orleans is a good for, fit for him. AD's a low-key guy. He's not interested in the spotlight of New York or L.A. necessarily. He is interested in winning. Winning is important to him, but he's all about the business. So as long as the Pelicans can be competitive and keep adding good pieces and, and be a franchise on the rise, I, I think they and A.D. make a really good pair. So the Pelicans and Saints are going to win the Super Bowl and NBA championship next season? Hey, it's, it's, the preseason's not even here yet. Of course they are. Of course they are, baby. <laughs> hey, hey, this is the gift that keeps on giving. I know you like oh, to eat out. Thank I know, you. I know you like fine wine. You're not a big drinker, but you like to have an occasional glass. I do. That Chase Della Chase is my favorite. It's right I've there been many on many times. Such a great organization. And this right here, uh, Task Performance. If you've never worn it, bamboo fiber. Feel that Ooh. you're gonna wear nothing but it. That's all I wear. Literally working awesome. out and dress stuff as well. You're gonna love it. Enjoy. By the way, we have a tradition. You went to LSU. So I'm gonna get you on the That's LSU good. ball. Yes, perfect. That's, Let's do it. She's a tiger. They got Les Miles right here. Craig Stoltz. Throw your, yes. throw, your, throw your Jen Hale on there somewhere. Got to cover uh, him when he was with Sammy the Bears. Sammy Martin, a lot of fellas on there you probably know. Oh, anyway, right. um, that is Jen Hale. That was a lot of fun. Uh, you get to see her. Obviously, if you watch NFL on Fox, she's there every weekend at some, at some event. But she's right here in New Orleans. She lives here, and she is uh, at every Pelicans game. That she's not working somewhere else, which is most all of them. Hey, coming up, though, we have Regis Progray. He's coming up next. And he, by the way, well, I've told you earlier in the, in the open, he is the super lightweight WBC champ, and I'm looking forward to him. He's got that big fight this week in the Lakefront Arena, and then later in the show, we're going to talk a little bit about how to eat right at restaurants with the dietitian with Oshner at Eat Fit Nola. Hey, be right back on Primetime Sports. Primetime Sports with Scott Alexander is underwritten by Task Performance. The owners of the Delachaise Wine Bar on St. Charles Avenue have opened up their newest creation uptown on Maple Street called Chez Delachaise, a new local wine bistro featuring a larger menu of small and large plates, a brighter atmosphere, and full table service. Additionally, patrons can enjoy a large patio out front as well as an extensive wine list offering selections from around the world. It's Chez Delachaise, 7708 Maple Street between Carrollton and Broadway. Rock and roll will never die. It's old New Orleans, my oh my. Come on, baby, let's go rock and roll at the city lane. Oh my, let's roll, let's rock and roll. Baby, do the rock and roll at the Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. I pride ourselves on having unique type guests. That's 80% sports. We have musicians, we have governors, we have all that coming on here. But this is our first boxer. And anybody that knows me knows I love boxing. I grew up the boxing era, the great heavyweights with Ali and Frazier and Norton and all the greats from that era. But I also went to a few boxing heavyweight championships. 
uh, middleweight stuff. Obviously, Roberto Duran, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard doing his thing down here in New Orleans, Tommy Hitman Hearns, and of course, Muhammad Ali and Leon Spinks in that great fight when Muhammad got his third heavyweight title after losing a couple times. But we have a New Orleanian right here who's destined for great things. He is undefeated. And I know you've probably seen him if you follow the local sports scene because he's been on a lot of shows lately. But I was like, I got to get him on here. His name is Regis Progre, the Rougarou. But he is fighting this Saturday night at UNO Lakefront Arena. And I urge you to get on over there. If you haven't been to a big time fight, you got to do it because he could have gone to Vegas. He had that option. And if you know anything about the boxing game, that is a dream for boxers. They want to go to Vegas. But he said, you know what? I want to go to my hometown, New Orleans. So let's show him the respect and go out there. But it's my thrill, my honor to have a guy, super lightweight champion. Thank you, Regis, man. how you doing, man? I'm good, man. Real good. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And I appreciate you coming because I know you had a youth camp. You see the shirt, mm -hmm. Team Regis Progray Youth Training Camp. And you came all the way over from the Marini area, and you popped over here, and I appreciate you. That's cool, man. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. You know, glad to just, you know, be back in New Orleans, you know, um, inspiring the youth. You know, when, when I was young, I didn't have that, you know, and as far as boxing, you know, boxing goes. We have New Orleans is like a hotbed for talent. You know, we have, like, of course, like rappers and, and football players and basketball players and comedians and actors, you know, but we don't have boxers. You right. Know? So, and, and the kids don't see that. They don't see the boxers, you know, so... Um, I'm glad, you know, to, you know, come back and, and just inspire, you know, of course, everybody can't be a fighter, but maybe some, the kids that, you know, I, I went and see some kids, probably 100 kids today, and you never know, one of them might be the next Ruru, you never know. Ruru, hey, by yeah. the way, I have to ask you this, because UFC and MMA is so big now, right? Mm -hmm. I love the, the sweet science of boxing. I mean, I just truly appreciate everything about the sport. Um, all the kids seem to be gravitating to that. Why not you? What uh, you talk about the the, the UFC? Why do you stay with boxing as opposed? I'm just you know curious. what? I'm, I I mean, well, growing up, like um, I was just always rough, always fighting and stuff like that in the street. I didn't discover. I really didn't discover the UFC. You know, um, my my first like I guess hero growing up was Mike Tyson. Like I watched ESPN and I saw like Mike, the Mike Tyson yes. highlights, and that's like my favorite fighter, you it's know? It, it was huh? just like, <laughs> I mean, man, people. like you had this little bitty yeah. short dude, yeah. big swole cocky dude, and he was just laying people out, it's, big old giants. It was like the David versus Goliath thing. He was just laying everybody out, and I was like, you know what? I want to be like him. You know, I think I was probably 13 or 14. I was like, one day I want to be like this man. And, you know, now here I am, you know? Well, with a, we you mentioned know. Leon Spinks. I have to say something, because 88 mm -hmm. was when he fought his brother, Michael Spinks, who yeah. was a much smaller heavyweight. Mm -hmm. But I, I, for the first time ever, and maybe the last, I pay for pay-per-view. Because uh, yes. I usually go to a restaurant or a bar. 90 seconds. 90 seconds, if that. It seemed like it was 25. I mean, it was <laughs> over before it started. I was like, yeah. what happened here? So what is your style in the boxing ring? I mean, I, I really, I can do so many different things. Um, but right now, like, I've been fighting people, and they can't take my power. I know I hit hard. You know, I'm naturally blessed with a lot of power. We see that right there. Yeah, some people, <laughs> some people just, you know, it's, some people just blessed with a punch, you know, but I, I know I can box and I can do so many different things in the ring, but um, most of the time I just walk people down and stalk them and, and just beat them up. My, my whole thing so is like, I want to you. Tyson in you, you intimidate people. I mean, that's, that's who I ultimately want to be right. like, you know, I, I got into it because of that. Like I looked at Tyson, I was like, you know, damn, like I want to be like him one day. And, and you know, I'm, I'm still, try, I'm still, you know, well, you don't want to add there. the weight, though, right? You, I mean, yeah, I'm definitely not. I can't yeah, be right, heavyweight. Right, right. You know, I, I'm 140 pounds. But so you're the I best 140-pound fighter in the, world. in the world. Yes. Yeah, I mean, honestly, be, don't be bashful, which I don't think you will no, be. No, I, I, I mean, I like? know. I'm the best in the world. I'm the best 140-pounder <laughs> fight in the world. And, you know, it's great that I happen to be from New Orleans. How great is it? Okay, I'm going to say that because I was a New Orleanian that moved to other places like yourself. Mm -hmm. Weren't you just proud to say you're from New Orleans wherever you were? Definitely. You know, we, we I mean, like I was saying earlier, man, we, we have, like, it's special. New Orleans people are just special. And, and I don't just say that because I'm from here. Like, I've been, you know, all over the world and I've been all over the co this country and everywhere. And you just don't find people like New Orleans people. Our mindset is just totally different. Like I say, it's a hotbed. Like here, it's a hotbed for talent. But when you're young, you don't know that until you expand and you go to like other places and you see like, I'm really special. Like I'm really special. You're special. And then, by the way, New Orleans is tattooed on your chest and now it's kind of filled in. So you didn't see it as well in that picture. Mm -hmm. But we have other shots of you when you were younger. Mm -hmm. New Orleans. 
So yeah. you, you, you speak it. So tell me how you, you grew up here and then you, you left, obviously, because of Katrina. But tell mm -hmm. the story real quick. I mean, yeah, I, I grew up here, grew up fighting on the street and all that stuff, being rough, of course. Um, you know, and, and Hurricane Katrina, you know, just took me away. I moved. I went to five different high schools. I went to 35 for two years. Right. And then um, I got kicked out of 35. Right. And I went to Sarah T. Reed. You really got me messing up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went. Then I went to Sarah T. Reed for... Yeah. Um, that week and two days before Hurricane Katrina hit, and you know, wow. of course, with the hurricane, I, the Hurricane Katrina thing, you know, we think we leave in every every year is hurricane season in New Orleans. You know, that's our season, hurricane season. So, um, I, I I left. I only had like three pair of shirt, three shirts, two pair of jeans, a pair of shoes, and like two pair of shocks, and and then that was it. That's all I had oh for goodness, how many man. months? Seriously. I don't know. When we moved all around, I think I counted like 17 different well, times. Okay, Houston, I know, was a base Houston world. was first. Yeah. Then I went to Mississippi for three weeks. Then I moved to Slidell with some cousins. And I love. I actually loved it in Slidell at first because it was so close to home. It was right there sure. by New Orleans. So I went there for three months. And then my mom, at the time, my mom was living in Atlanta. Then she moved back to Houston. And we, uh, we ended up living in Houston. Now, I'm the only one in Houston. I have me and I have a younger sister that lives in Houston, but everybody else is back here. Are you training there or are you train at West? I, no, I train. I, I do both now. So I train in, I, I live in Houston, train mm -hmm. in Houston, but um, this camp I started in L.A. I went to um, Los Angeles, and that's like, I think that might be my next home, really. Because that's I love great, it. isn't it? I love it out yeah, in L.A. There's a lot so to I think, love. You know, yeah, I think most likely I might be moving I forgot how much months. I liked it. I, I did a game there in February, and I'm like, because I was like L.A., uh, whatever. Yeah. I lived there for a summer back in the day. But I went back and I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Driving around. I'm it's, like, this yeah, is it's, nice. It's, a, it's definitely a, a real nice place to be. So I, I love it in L.A. Well, we touched on it earlier uh, as far as, you know, your career. And you could have gone to Vegas. And I want you, mm -hmm. I want to say this for this fight. Because am I wrong in thinking that most people want to go to Vegas to fight? All fighters want. That's the dream, right? right. All fighters want to go to Vegas. They want to have the big fights in Vegas, you know. But I say they, they offered me to fight in Vegas or New Orleans. And I said, like, of course, New Orleans. You know, they think, like, I was probably going to say, of course, Vegas. Right. No, of course, <laughs> of course New, New Orleans. Orleans. Put, it in, put it in my hometown, you what know. What was like, the reaction? I mean, when they yeah, said Yeah, I mean, it was like, okay. Like, really, okay, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, I'm glad I'm bringing it back here, you know. Um, at least to start it off, you know, my whole goal is to get not the big time boxing back, not just Regis Program in New Orleans, like the big time fighters back to New Orleans. Like if we can bring big time boxing back to New Orleans, we had success with the Ali and the in the Yeah, and, and it was Ray a, Leonard. There was a stretch. Tommy exactly. Hitman Hearns was getting yeah. after it too. And so you know, we had it here for Marvin a while. Marvin Hagler. Yeah. So we had it here for a while, and so you know, if if I can just open that door up to bring it back, that'll be perfect. All right, you had a big fight recently that you got this WBC against mm -hmm. Julius. Is it Ndongo? Ndongo? Yeah. Okay. He's uh, a giant. Look how big he is. He's tall and yeah. lean. I mean, what were you thinking? I mean, this guy's like that's a, a lot of reach. I'm imagining he's mm -hmm. got longer yeah. longer arms. Yeah, yeah. He so, was big, man. I was just I was telling my coach, I was like. How is he so big? Like, yeah. why is he so big? Like, how can he weigh the same amount yeah, as me? Yeah, like, how? Yeah, exactly. That's right. what I was like, how can he make 140 pounds? He's <laughs> so big. I never had a doubt in my mind about you know losing the fight or winning the fight. Never a doubt. Never a doubt at all. I I just I'm filled with confidence. It's yeah. no way. He got to be. Yeah, it's no way. I don't. You you have to have you have to be confident, but at the same time you have to be realistic. You and know. You're staring him down right there. It's like it's over. You yeah. Say it's yeah. Over and right you know now? what, man? You know what? He took. A hard shot. Like, I hit him so hard. I don't know how he got back up. The, I think it was the second time in the second round. I hit him so hard. I don't know so how he got back up. So this guy's a good up. fighter. He's going to He's, he's gonna a good around. fighter. I think, I think he should be able to come back. But at the same time, like, once you get hit like that and hurt like that, it's hard to come back from that, you know. But <laughs> How many times do you hit people like that where you know that this guy's never going to fight again? I, I mean, it's been a couple of times. <laughs> I didn't hit some people like that, you know. But with him, it was... You know, I hit him so hard. I just don't know how he, the, the second time in the second round, I don't know how he got back up. He got back up, and all I had to do is just, like, blow on him, and he can fall. we got a couple minutes left, so I want to promote this fight. Mm -hmm. you got uh, Juan Jose Velasquez. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you know about him, and what are your thoughts? Nothing at all, honestly. You know, he's 20, you know, he's 21 and old, same thing, 20 and old, same thing. Like, I'm, you know, I have the same record. He's a grown man. He's undefeated. He's coming to fight. So you That's don't know anything? Then that, that doesn't really. scare you at all? Nah, I mean, you can't find footage to me? I don't do it. Oh, I don't, don't, I don't do it with it. nobody. Oh, you don't know what he's like? I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't follow him. I don't follow him. You know, I go out there. The greatest fighters ever, they went out there and they went off instinct and rhythm. And that's what I want to do. You know, you look at Ray Robinson and, you know, Henry Armstrong, Ali. Well, you know Ford the history, Mayweather. man. I know, You're I got some Ray Robinson. Yeah, I go all the way back to Joe Gaines, you know, so, and Joe Lewis and all of them. All right, before we go, the Rougarou. 
You, 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 the mask. I got to get the, the background on this real quick. Honestly, it was just, a, I think I was four or five and oh at the time, and it was just, we, I love we it, needed though. Nick. I love it too now. But at, really, at first, I really didn't like it. Like, I, I didn't, I wasn't feeling the whole, the nickname, you know. The so my, at the time, my manager, my, the, my manager at the time, and my daddy was going back and forth. We was like on the group text going back and forth about nicknames. And my daddy, they said all kinds of stuff, but my daddy said Ruru, and my manager was like, that's it. And so, you know, I kept it for a while. I didn't like it at first, to be honest. I really didn't like it. Yeah, I, I, I didn't like it. But then I put the mask on. I had a fight. I put the mask on, and they like the crowd loved it. And so after that, the crowd loved it. They embraced it, and gotta do I it. loved it. Yeah. Are you going to wear it this weekend? Yeah, definitely. So we got the mask. We got the New Orleans tat. We got it all. This is a New Orleans company. And once you wear a task performance, yeah, you I got to try that. I'm, I'm going to tell I'm, you. You know what? I'm going to work out like probably right well, after I'm gonna this, I'm going to go switch too. the size out for you. But, hey, uh, by the way, they might need a new sponsor. Exactly. I mean, they got a great golfer. Yeah. And here is a restaurant right there in Uptown. It's on Maple Street. It's called Shays Della Shays. Check it out. Hey, this oh, is Regis nice. Pro Gray. I'm going to say it again. Go see this fight. They don't come to New Orleans very often. And it's going to be a lot of fun. UNO Lakefront Arena. I can't stress it enough. It's going to be a great fight. Also, coming up next, we had Jen Hale just now. She's a Pelican silent reporter. Now we have Molly Kimball. It's ladies' night. And, of course, Regis Pro Grade 2 right here on Primetime Sports. Welcome back to Primetime Sports. How about Regis Progray? I cannot wait for that fight on Saturday night. And, of course, Jen Hale earlier. i got to thank her. I love when she does those Pelicans games. And, of course, when I'm not working a game, NFL sidelines, I'm always watching the game she's on. But next, we've talked about it earlier, Molly Kimball. Hey, she's been around here for 20 years, an LSU graduate from Baton Rouge. She went to Baton Rouge High. She came down right after college and has been working at the same place literally since 1999, around that time. And that's Oshner Fitness. She is registered dietitian over there. She's the founder of Eat Fit Nola, which is one of the main reasons I wanted to have her on because it seems like every restaurant, now that I'm trying to lose the weight I gain when I move back to New Orleans, well, every restaurant I go, I'm looking at the Eat Fit Nola options, and it's more often than not, they are partners with them. And here she is. She's the one that started it, and she's the one helping us all get back in shape the right way. Her name is Molly Kimball. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to the show. How are you? I appreciate it. Good. I could have gone on and on. I used <laughs> to be an agent too, so I could talk. But first of all, tell me how this whole Eat Fit NOLA thing got started. Yeah, so like you said, I've been a registered dietitian at Oshner Fitness Center, which if you're not familiar, it's Elmwood Fitness Center for years. Yeah, we right. rebranded to Oshner Fitness Center. I've been a dietitian there since 99 and started out, you know, kind of... Um, traditional as much as a traditional role of a dietitian is in a fitness center but working with clients one-on-one -on -one, um, how do we meet the goals what are all the you know all the different things that people might be striving for health-wise and we have um, four dietitians on site at the fitness center and we do still offer that um, but a couple of years ago our leadership said hey what can we do to have an even bigger impact on the community in addition to seeing clients one-on-one -on -one? and so um, eat Fit was actually my husband's idea. Nice. So for years when we'd go out to eat, people, sometimes we knew them, sometimes we didn't know them, would come up and say, first of all, what are you doing eating here? There's nothing healthy to eat at <laughs> this restaurant. That's New Orleans. You feel like that, yeah. but there is a lot of times. Or they would say, hey, I have high blood pressure, or I'm watching my carbs, what should I order here? Right. And so my husband forever was like, you should work with restaurants and put that little logo on the menu. But it was one of those things where I was seeing clients and kind of doing that so much that I knew it was a giant undertaking. Yeah. So when we said, you know, they said, hey, what can we do to have this impact? I was like, maybe I have an idea. You know, we could work with restaurants and see what can we do at that point of decision making to take the guesswork out. How did you start that? Because that's my thing. It is an undertaking. And when I saw how many restaurants you're involved with, I'm like, how does she do this? She goes to each one. I guess now they know you. So when you walk through the door, it's not like, but when you went to your first couple of restaurants, they didn't know who you were. 
How does that work? So that's a really great question. So right now we have in the New greater New Orleans area, we have about 120-ish restaurants, give or take. Um, and when you're in that restaurant, like you said, you'll see the Eat Fit seal on the menu. But when we started it, um, 2013, it was, you know, Asher said, yeah, let's do it. Let's give it a go. Figure out what are you going to call it? What's the nutrition criteria going to be? Um, but I didn't really know where to start, so I started with people who I knew, who liked me and trusted me. Nice, and okay. And I reached out to those restaurant owners and said, hey, we're giving this a go, we're gonna give it a shot, we're not sure exactly, we're gonna have to kind of feel it out and figure out our system first, do you wanna try this out with me? And so we had Commander's Palace, um, Vega Tapas, which has been on Metairie Road, um, a little hole in the wall place on the West Bank, and just a handful of other places. And we were able to kind of get our, get our feet wet and kind of see what our system was gonna be. And as we built up kind of the, feel of what this is going to be like actually at these restaurants, more and more restaurants started seeing that they were doing it and wanted to be a part of it themselves. But it's still just really grassroots. It's whenever we see that there's an opportunity, we, we have a lot of people that can refer through our app if they want to have a restaurant be a partner. And so we just call, walk in. It's, it's still a very informal system to become an Eat Fit partner. Well, here's the thing. I know you pride yourself on all kinds of restaurants. You love the middle tier that most people like us can afford. But I just saw some big hitters in there, too. I mean, you, Commander's Palace, Tableau, uh, Dickie Brennan Steakhouse. I mean, that's the question. When you go to those places, you want to indulge in a sense because it is a treat. And not all of us can eat there every week. You know what I mean? So if you go... So how do you go to that kind of place? Let's say like Dickie Brennan's in general, because that's a steakhouse. And, and I know fish is good for you. I know, you know certain portions of chicken can be good. Of course, seafood is good. But can you eat steak and stay on Eat Fit Nola? Yes, that's a great question. So something like a petit filet is actually lean. It's a lean cut of beef. So our guidelines are no white carbs. So if something has any type of white flour, white rice, white pasta, it's out of that there. That looks delicious. Very low sugar, um, lower sodium, and lower animal fats. Um, but a lot of times the issue is not just that it's that steak, it's what it's served with. Or it's not just that it's a piece of grilled fish or chicken, but all the other stuff going on it. So we'll go in and we'll say, hey, what do we need to do to kind of either serve this with something different or adjust the sauce that's on it or whatever Whatever type of kind of tweaking it is and with restaurants like that I think part of our success is we don't push things on them so right. we're not taking anything yeah. away a lot of people are like don't mess with my nachos at the Superdome right, right, or whatever right, right, it is right, right. so we're not taking things away but we definitely want to give that option and so, so you're saying nachos at the Superdome is good for you <laughs> not, eat okay. Fit. Okay. Not, not eat good. fit not eat fit but you can have them once in a while right so All we right. so we we'll work with the restaurants and we'll say hey these these items look like they might fit we start with you know more than a handful of them and we work back and forth we get the recipes from the chefs we crunch the numbers and then it's it's a real good give and take and so there's some things that they say yeah we would love to make that change that's easy for us others that they go eh, not so much and so once we kind of have that back and forth and give and take it's what the chefs are proud to serve and it's also what we are comfortable with and proud of nutritionally that's the key because the chefs i mean their reputations online for whatever they serve they don't want to serve anything that's bland or light so yeah that's what i've noticed from the pictures i've seen the stuff looks good to eat. It's not chicken over lettuce. Right, you know? right, 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 right. We were like, people were like, okay, of course, if you're going out to eat and you're trying to be, quote, good, as people say, you're just like, give me just a chicken breast over lettuce. Who wants to do can't that? Can't do it. No, no not at all. can't do it. And what we always say, too, is if someone just wants to eat clean, look good, feel better, all right, this is a fit. But for people who really have issues like diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, the eat fit criteria were These designed These are great-looking meals. Aren't hey, they? by the way, let's take me back now. How does... How does Molly Kimball make this her lifelong ambition and goals because I mean, we're in college, for instance, is that where you got the you know the, the thought that this is going to be what I'm going to do for the rest of my life, or you how know, did it begin? It's crazy. Like I, I started out when my dad has always been very health oriented. So he was kind of a, a jogger back in the '70s before people really ran and they didn't know what he was doing down the you know down the street. But it's something that I've, guys, but... I've always been interested in. It. Um, I didn't actually know that being a dietitian was something that could be a career. So back in high school or even younger, it wasn't something that you heard a lot about. So once I got to LSU, I was like, wait a minute, I could actually do you know, nutrition as a career, that seems so cool. Um, at the time, most of the jobs were actually in hospitals and places like that. So when I moved to New Orleans, did my dietetic internship here, and the job came, you know, we actually, Elmwood Fitness Center didn't have a dietitian at the time. They never had a nutrition program. And they were looking to bring someone on to start it. And I was like, man, I would love that. And that's kind of where it started. Wow. It just evolved over the years and kind of started there, figured out how to make that work to, to keep my job there and grow so it. You're the yeah. first one they've had and it's been two decades. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. remarkable. I, I was just looking, something struck me because you do a lot of different stuff. I should have said this in the open. 
Uh, obviously, NOLA.com, Times Picayune, you write columns for them. I've seen that. Uh, that's where I recognize your name first because I read that a lot. But also WGNO, you do stuff. We saw a couple things right there. It made me think of it again. Uh, tell me what you do. I mean, besides what you do with Oscar Fitness and eFit NOLA. Yeah, so I think kind of to the point of when you thought, man, I would have no idea those are the things that I would end up doing for a career. It's something that nutrition is, is a passion of mine. Um, I think there's a lot of people who they are um, more exhibitionist personalities. They're the ones who want to be in front of everyone and they want to, you know, they like that part. It's not my nature. That's not my comfort zone, but I make myself get into that area because it's a great way to help spread the word about n nutrition education and wellness, hopefully motivate, inspire people, and also just educate that it doesn't have to really be that hard. So things like the column or, or the um, TV segment, I look at as just kind of additional ways to help when are you message. on those and when do you write them, just so people know? Yeah, thanks for asking. So um, Wednesday mornings, every Wednesday morning, WGNO, 6.15, 6.45 a.m. No um, night owls. Two different segments. You better DVR it. And then we have a weekly column that runs on Tuesdays on NOLA.com and in print in the Times Picayune on Wednesdays. But our um, Ostra Fitness Center, we actually have something called Nutrition Bites. Uh -huh. And that's a Friday email that actually has all of the links to all those things in it. Um, we'll have the link to this show in it as well. And that goes out to everybody on Fridays. So you can email us and say, hey, I want to sign up for Nutrition Bites. All right, here's the other thing with Eat Fit NOLA. In New Orleans, we know we all love to eat, but they, a lot of people love to drink down here. It is the city that care for God. Les Le Bon Ton Roulet, and you do cocktails too, because I saw cocktails. this actually when I was over at uh, Oscar Fitness, and I was being good, as you say, and I was just out by the pool after working out, but I was, people around me had like these things they called skinny margaritas, and I'm like, they serve that here? What is that? She said, there's like, it's part of Eat Fit Nola too. Right. So you have cocktails that are approved. What are they? Right. So we have at our at our fitness center we have um, oh, I'm gonna now forget but the Eat Fit Margarita is the top popular one but we have about four that are on the menu all the time we have these look good by the way different cocktails that rotate through daily specials and it's fantastic because our cafe was like you know you have to know that being the nutritionist when you come in saying like hey guys what if we do this. You get the eye roll sometimes, you know? Yeah, right. And they're like, Molly, yeah. we're just trying to have steak night, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, and then when they say, wow, you know, the, the Eat Fit Margarita is actually outselling the other cocktails, that's a really cool thing. People have pulled yeah. for a reason. They want to look right. good, you know? It, so, it's true. And, <laughs> and it's, you know, a lot of people would say, well, you know, are cocktails healthy? Well, if someone's going to order a margarita, we'd like them to order an Eat Fit version. You know? Yeah, right. And by the way, there's no chance. Desserts are out completely, right? Because no, this is good question. We actually Wait, have no. desserts. No desserts are. Wait, the I can hardest. have dessert too. <laughs> Not just any. With your nachos at the Superdome. Okay, right. yeah, that's what but, I'm saying. But um, we do have desserts that are eat fit. And those, those quarts of Haagen Dazs is good. Not good. <laughs> Not good. All right, I did that. But there's there. desserts. I would say are a bigger challenge than cocktails. Cocktails can be really easy. Desserts we do work with. We're Look at actually. This. Look at this chocolate. We're working with some local bakeries on some eat fit king cakes as we speak. So we've got some different options of how we can um, how we can make healthier treats still tastes good. Well, by the way, you have some, some places that you like. I mean, I know you love all your partners, but a lot of people love sushi now. Love it. And I heard you're part of Tsunami now. And I'm, not, I'm not getting plugs for this, but if you do want to give me a free meal at any of these places <laughs> I've mentioned, I'll take it. But no, but Tsunami is a, a very popular place in Lafayette, in New Orleans, and in Baton Rouge as well. So you're part of them as well? They've been great partners too. So as we... Leah and, Simone? Yes. Well, we work with Michelle Simone? over there. Yes. Okay. And so... Um, we tsunami is a partner and rock and sake rock actually. and sake yeah so rock and sake is printing their menus and by the end of the month actually and they're also in baton rouge as well and so um and speaking of baton rouge we've expanded eat fit so we started here in new orleans but we've expanded it um into eat fit br eat fit acadiana eat fit southwest louisiana and we've been really excited um so we kind of you know it was a lot of it's a grassroots initiative a lot of just kind of stay focused and, and it's a lot of hands-on outreach with restaurants. We got a grant from Blue Cross Blue Shield Foundation yeah. um, that went into effect earlier this year and it helps to fund that expansion of Eat Fit statewide. So at the end of this year we'll be launching Eat Fit Shreveport and then next year we'll have Eat Fit Ruston, Eat Fit Monroe in Central Louisiana. So. Now sometimes I'm scatterbrained. Did you mention the app yet? Because this no. is okay this Thank is you. but as I do this first you want to talk about as you do our tradition. Okay. This is a nice gift certificate, and if yeah. they're not with Eat Fit Nola yet, Ooh. they're one of my favorite places. You know what this place yes, is? Yes, Delachay. Yeah. Shay's Delachay's, the this new one, the, the okay. new one on Maple Street. Yes, even love. better. 
I've been there have, once. They, and they have table that. service. So you don't have to go to the bar like Del Shades. And they're owned by the same guy. Yeah. So it's bet. great. And we didn't have the right size and female for you, so I apologize. But you are a task ambassador, yeah. so you probably have stuff. But this is Love a task shirt. Before we see that, how about that task? So, we are. That's beautiful, though. Love this. So Task is one of his favorites. So if you're not familiar with it, local um, bamboo, super soft cotton. So I actually, this is their St. Charles collection, and yeah. I have a navy one for myself. So the fact that it'll, my husband, it'll Give be... Give your plug, your husband's name. Fantastic. Brad Slaughterer. Brad Slaughterer. Yeah. Brad will love this. So you're not a slaughterer yet. You're just a Kimball. Almost. <laughs> just a Kimball. So you yeah. do better. That's hard to spell. You have to spell this for everybody. But about the app. About the app. Yeah. So um, the about app last is night's app. a free <laughs> app, and it's download. Uh, you go to Eat Fit in your app store right. and you can find all the restaurants around you we have hundreds of recipes as well but when you click on the restaurant you can see the full nutrition facts so for someone who's looking at their sodium their carbs or want to know how much protein they're getting all of that's in the app and then we also have dine out coming um, August 22nd it's Wednesday August 22nd and that's where we ask people to go out dine out at your favorite eat fit restaurant and participating restaurants donate a percent of the proceeds back to our eat fit nonprofit initiative it's been a pleasure. Yeah, it really you. has, and I hope you enjoy the gifts, and yes, I appreciate sure. you. Have a great time. And by the way, Eat Fit New Orleans, we can do it. I'm starting to do it myself, believe it or not. I'm down 20. Hopefully I get another 20 more. Hey, by the way, what a great night. This was ladies' night. Got to thank Molly Kimball and, of course, Jennifer Hale and Regis Progray. Ain't no lady, but he'll be fighting this weekend. I can't wait for that as well. It's been fun. Before I leave, though, there's a guy named Lee Kirkpatrick out there. Put this man in your prayers. He is a hero. He's got all kinds of stages of cancer everywhere. He probably won't be with us very long. He's, he is an Ohio State Buckeye guy, but he is a very, very cool dude. He served so many times in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and he's still in his 30s. But put him in your prayers if you would. Hey, by the way, we'll see you next week. Don't forget, it's Coach Ogeron and, of course, the governor of Louisiana, John Bell Edwards, right here on Primetime Sports.